Hi -o! Hello, Hello, everybody. Not <laughs> today. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. I'm Paddy Murphy. There is Pro Tipster Dan, and up there is Pro Tipster Martin, up there in his tower, looking down upon us. <laughs> You're all very welcome to the show. Uh, you can check us out uh, here. Uh, we're doing we're streaming this live on uh, Facebook. We're also on uh, iTunes, Android Podcatchers, and uh, yeah. Uh, YouTube as well. Did I already say that? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, to look, it was a massive weekend of sport, and uh, we do apologize for not putting out any podcasts of late. We've had some internet gremlins living in our uh, website, but uh, they are dead now and will not be fed after midnight ever again. We promise. Lads, how's it going? Yeah, all right. This week has absolutely flown by for me. Nice to see Dan back as well. Yeah. Hello, Dan. Hi there. <laughs> yeah. No jet lag here. No, 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 no. Like good. Did you have a good time, Dan? Um, yeah, it was interesting. It was um, definitely an experience going to watch uh, an NHL and an NBA game. Um, very, very different from watching football. And not, I don't know. I enjoyed it, but not my normal bag, I don't think. You wouldn't be able to go every week? Oh, no, no. It just get on my nerves. It get on my nerves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just, just like... Um, going into going in to see the Knicks, like you're not allowed to take banners in at all. You're not allowed to take flags or banners or anything like that uh, in. No, no fun, and, huh? Um, no fun, no fun allowed. Um, and the security, Jesus Christ! <laughs> God forbid you bring a bag of cookies in. <laughs> Seriously, is that bad? Yeah. It's where the TSA trains before they go and work in the airports. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> but, right, but look, let's. Uh... Let's start. That was that. What what a couple of days of Champions League football. Where um, I think we've all been really spoiled. Um, you know, the first night on Tuesday, the Liverpool uh, Man City match. That's kind of been overshadowed now by everything else that's gone on. But uh, what's your reactions to Man City going out? Um, I was Liverpool just better team, weren't they? Yeah. Um, I think when, when, when they went a goal up after two minutes in the second leg, you know, everyone's like, I up, you know, here we go. Mm. But, um, yeah, Liverpool were the better team. They, they, uh, they did a number on Pep. And this shows that Pep's not a perfect team. Uh, Man City are not a perfect team yet. Yeah, although that, that goal, that goal that wasn't allowed, that second um, goal that got chalked off for of Sane, that... Just before half time, that would have been a completely different story if that stood, because that should have been allowed. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't see the point of these um, officials on the by the goal line. I don't get it because he, he had a clear view of that. Surely, isn't there something that those lads on the on the goal line they're not allowed to make any decisions? They're only allowed back up decisions, isn't that it? I don't know. Surely you could just have a have a little word in the referee's ear saying, "Look, well, come on, no, come on, see come on. but but." I got this from a referee, right? He was a referee. He's retired now. And this is his uh, opinion of the Sane uh, offside. So Sane is offside on the first phase. I know Dan, Dan is already getting annoyed when using words like that in football. So Sane is offside on the first, in the first phase and is then in at an advantageous position from an offside position in the next phase. Also, Milner's touch can't be seen as intentional play. The keeper punching it starts the second phase and Sané is offside from the first. So, that's what he says. Oh, this offside. Why can't they just make it um, like <laughs> 20 years ago offside? Flag up, <laughs> um, yeah, I, no, but uh, I, 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 I agree with you. I think if, if City had got that second goal, I think they'd have got, scored eventually, but... I uh, think City, yeah, would have been able to match them. I reckon. You no. Know? Yeah, would have changed it. I'd like to see that that replay again, actually, because I didn't think Sane was offside in the first phase. So I want to see that back again. Right. Yeah. Uh, what was the second match that night? Yeah, of course, Roma coming back against Barcelona. That was that was insane. And and I love uh, uh, who got the third goal. What's his name? The defender. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. it's Lads, it's just beautiful. It reminded me of uh, you remember that Marco Tardelli one uh, for Italy. Just the joy on his face, <laughs> and then he's over running to the to the bench, crying like he's done it. It's just amazing to watch. Absolutely fantastic. It was it was great. It would have been 
you know, it would have been a great celebration if it was a, a last minute winner, but they still had to hold out for like yeah. eight minutes or something, yeah, silly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Messi had a chance, he had a chance to do it. And uh, Dembele uh, tried to lob one in as well. So, uh, yeah, God, it was just a mental match, absolutely mental. And then, of course, uh, and then last night, last night was just insane, you know. <laughs> Yes, mad. I think, I think <laughs> I've never seen the work uh, chat as busy as last night. People were just so furious. Yeah. <laughs> getting the penalty. But lads, it was a penalty. It was a penalty. I'll mean, oh, go on, Dan. I was just going to say, look at the argument that we had in the uh, in our work, work meeting today. Um, David, our Spanish uh, correspondent, uh, Real Madrid fan. Mm-hmm. I suppose someone has to support them. Um <laughs> Yeah, he was adamant it was a penalty. Some of the Turkish lads, may, may, maybe not so much. I don't know if they're back to Juventus or... <laughs> but, yeah, was, they were fuming. But... Yeah, they were fuming, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it come was, on. It was a penalty. I mean, if, he, if the defender wasn't there, he was going to score. So, he, the defender didn't touch the ball. So it's Do you know what I thought was interesting, though? When, when As the ball came to him, uh, he could definitely have headed it. I don't know why he chested it. Mm, yeah, I'm not he, sure about that. He tried for him to dive. But he chose not to. He chose to take it on the chest, and then he would have had to take, uh, and then he would have had to to hit it in with his foot, which he probably would have. But we'll never know. But I, I don't know why he didn't just go for the header. Like it was at a, it was at a decent height where he could have dived at it and, and got ahead. But anyway, whatever. We're never going to know, are we? Um, Buffon's red card, lads. Uh, are we all? Yeah, he should have been sent off. Um, I don't know. It's a bit of you know hot headed, I guess. But it was a heat in the moment thing and. You know, you just gotta understand the situation. Let him try and be a hero. That would have been that would have been great. Oh, so it didn't happen. <laughs> I don't know. Kind of on the, the the lads on. I was watching the RTE coverage. The lads on RTE were were saying, "Look, you can't touch the ref, and and the ref has to show his kind of um he's the boss kind of thing." You know, so I I, I get it. And and it's not that he just kind of you know held his elbow around and like he was pushing him and like they moved. They were saying that like. You know, he, he gave the penalty. He was pretty much at the penalty box. And, you know, like 30 seconds later, he's, you know, 10, 10 yards down the pitch. So it was really aggressive. It was like the old Man United from Roy Keane and Yap Stam used to hound referees. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, whatever, sure. Um, that's the way it goes. But, uh, um, was- I, I, I saw, um, I saw uh, Correa de la Sport, uh, like someone holding it up last night. I think he said something about a bounty on Michael Oliver's head. <laughs> um, by Sunrise. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well I, I, I can tell you where it's going to be on Monday night. It's going to be at the London Stadium. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> the West Ham game. But no, I, um, I don't know if anyone heard Michael Owen off, after the final whistle when they did the old uh, pundit <laughs> This is it's amazing. Like, it's like, what some consolation for Joanne Luigi Buffon was that he's, <laughs> he doesn't have to miss the semi final. <laughs> Oh, that's ridiculous. What the heck is that, Michael Owen? What the hell does brain work? Or totally is the answer. I don't get Michael <laughs> He's weird. It's mad, isn't it? Right, so look, let's get on to uh, this weekend's football. There's no point talking about the Europa League because uh, when this podcast uh, is edited and comes out mm-hmm. later, it, 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 the games will probably be around half time or so. Um, so we'll just look ahead to the weekend. Uh, Friday night sees some uh, championship action. Uh, Aston Villa and Leeds. Uh, Martin, I think you wrote about this. Yeah, I did write about this game. Um, I mean, <laughs> Leeds are in absolute dire form. Um, they always seem to, I don't know, at the start of the season, always seem like, they're going to get back to winning ways and, and they could go up. And they were fifth on Boxing Day uh, when they beat Burton and have not, <laughs> they've, I've hardly won a game since. Um, they've not won away since Boxing Day, which is which is crazy. Um, and although Aston Villa should should win this quite comfortably, but they seem to be a bit of a, um, they seem to be a bit of a bogey team for Aston Villa because they've not, uh, they've only lost once. Uh, to Villa since year 2000. Um, but for me, Villa just, I know Dan's not going to agree with me, but Villa looked good. Uh, <laughs> they will pro- they will, will probably fold uh, and, and crumble in the playoffs. I don't think they're going to get all Mac now. They're too far behind. Uh, I think Fulham might get that, but they, they just look, they look really good. Jack Grealish uh, cracking volley the other day. Mm. And um, 
yeah, I, I think they do lead quite comfortably. Um, so I, I, I've gone for uh, Villa minus seven point zero point seven five on the edge in handicap at one point seven six. However, um, unders at one point nine might be something to consider as well because that's landed in all, all, each of the last five meetings between the two sides. Um, Villa, Villa are pretty good at home. They don't concede a, a lot, do they? They don't. And it, I know Terry's you know, John Terry's carrying a little bit of a knock, so. Uh, be interesting to see if he starts or not because uh, Leeds Leeds might grab a goal of us. Uh, what? Yeah, Terry's out. Saying Terry's out. Yeah, yeah. I saw a presser for it this afternoon. Um, yeah. I'm not even going to look at stats. Back Leeds. Um, back Leeds. <laughs> interesting. Back Leeds. And I'll tell you for why. Um, it's that time of the season when it's all mm-hmm. about momentum, and I get the feeling that um, those DVBs are. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dan, Dan, on on momentum. Then, uh, since you brought it up, um, where do you see Cardiff City season ending? Have because Fulham are above them now. Do you can you see Cardiff getting back above them at all? It's a really tricky one. Uh, Fulham got Brentford this weekend. I think Fulham can get three points from that. Cardiff are done. I think Cardiff. Um, you know th- those two penalties they missed against Wolves. Uh, you know, you know those moments that define you, that decide your season. I think that was it for yeah. Cardiff, and I honestly believe if Cardiff end up in the playoffs, they're done. Um, I think so. Yeah, the, the teams that drop back from second place, like because they've lost their last few games, generally mm. never do well in the playoffs. Um, the teams that do well are teams that go on like great runs of form, going into the playoffs and carry the momentum forwards. Uh, normally, anyway. So um, my, my outside tip for the players at the moment is Millwall, who are unbeaten in 16. Crazy. The Mill, Millwall's, Millwall's um, I, was, I wrote their preview uh, against Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday. Um, before uh, Christmas, Millwall hadn't won away from goal. Uh, uh, sorry, before New Year's Day, Millwall had not won away from home in 21 championship games. Since uh, they lost on New Year's Day, they played eight championship games away from home and won seven. Drawn one. What Neil Harris has done this year, I don't know, but everything he touches turns to gold. Um, a good example on Bolton, uh, the Bolton game midweek, dropped Steve Morrison, brought in uh, Tom Elliott because he'd been playing well in training. Tom Elliott scores. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he's doing it, but he's just mm-hmm. every change he's making is positive. The players at the moment must think they can beat anyone. So they're going into every game, sky high confidence. And when, when you play with confidence, things happen. The luck just goes your way. You know, you get the rub of the green. You get the decisions because you believe you can do it. It's amazing. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, Fulham. I, yeah. yeah. But oh, I, think okay. Fulham, I think Fulham have tailed off a little bit too early. And I think the Brentford game's a big test for them. It's a really big test for them. If they, 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 they lose that, then Cardiff are back in business. Um, they win it, Cardiff are out. Yeah, I think Cardiff are away to Norwich as well, aren't they? So that's yeah, not easy. which is a tough one. Yeah, a tough tough one. Yeah. And of course, um, Wolves, uh, well, we're going to do something in a bit, aren't we? Yeah, you can talk about it now. Uh, Wolves are playing, are playing Birmingham, yeah. That should, that, I mean, that, uh, was the title decided yesterday? No, no they can win it. Okay. okay, against God, you. I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> it will happen. Come here, Dan. Dan, what's, what's the... Um, how, how do people in Birmingham feel about Wolves? Because is there a thing we that, you know... Them. No, okay. I, I know you hate them, but okay. Do you hate them more now because, oh, you know, yeah. they've... Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Or Jimenez, George Jimenez? Oh, I, th- I think it's definitely a lot of hate going their way for what uh, they've done with Jorge Mendes. But what people need to understand is this is not a one-year thing. This has been over the last two or three years. And they've just found the right formula by bringing in Nuno Santo. Yes, they brought in Ruben Neves, who has no right to be in the championship. He should be going on. Yeah, Yeah, what a goal. But Lee Evans' goal for Sheffield United was actually better, I think. No. (laughs) I actually think Lee Evans' goal for Sheffield United, the first one, was better. Um, Ruben Neves has no business being in the championship. He should be in the Portuguese squad uh, squad for the World Cup. Mm. Um, There's talk of him being picked off for 50 million this window. Oh, that surprised me. He's only 21 as well, isn't he? But this, this is what they've done. Wolves have bought really cleverly in that they've bought players who are young. And yes, they've spent a fair bit of money, but all of them have got massive real resale value. 
Mm. They've, they've actually been really smart. Um, and Fosun, um, you said that there's a bit of there's a bit of uh, thing there as well with the Chinese ownership thing, because uh, in China they're cracking down obviously on, on foreign ownership. Now the question is, will Fosun suffer next? Uh, we assume uh, Wanda have been forced to sell their stake in um, Atletico Madrid. We've seen uh, Sunning having problems at Inter. Uh, the guy AC Milan, Lee Hong Yang, uh, Lee, oh, I can't remember his name, uh, bankrupt, Mr. Bankrupt. Yeah. He's bankrupt yeah. now. Um, so they've gone after the big dogs. And if um, Bulls make it into top flight, they could be next. It depends which side of the uh, the coin, if they're friends with Xi Jinping or not. Do you see... Yeah, do you do you see a lot of the neutrals kind of turning against Wolves if uh, when they come up next year? Because a lot of people don't really realise what's been going on. Um, yes and no. Um, I'd like to think that, but then again, who turns against uh, Man City being owned by uh, uh, the an Emirati royal family with a horrific um, yeah. human rights uh, record? Well, I think, but I, I, I think if, if City went on a run of like say three seasons to win the Premier League, then I'd soon then I I reckon they'd pretty quickly become the most hated team in England. But yeah. look at Bournemouth, yeah. right? Bournemouth came up and Bournemouth were plucky Bournemouth, you know, coming up to the Premier League, owned by Russian oligarchs. <laughs> it, it's, it's all a sham. It's all a sham. <laughs> and then we're, we're just stuck with Golden Sullivan. Hey, hey, I, 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 we don't even know for sure who owned up, who owns us. Um, the guy who supposedly owns us bought a house um, this month for 143 million quid. Nice. But he's never had his picture. Ta- yeah, a house. He's never had his picture taken in the press. Um, but it might be another guy who um, is well. I can't legally say what I know about him because um, mm. I don't want us to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> Um, last, there's another. There's a big. Go- Let's go back to Saturday to the Premier League. Uh, the title, which, which probably will be the title decider, um, Spurs and City. Uh, I don't know which one of you's wrote about it, but you've gone for it to be put on ice for another week. Who wrote this? I'll, I'll write about this. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's my title. I think I don't know. Harry Kane is claiming goals left, right, and centre, so uh, it wouldn't. Wouldn't surprise me if he uh, if he scored a couple this weekend. I I just think Spurs at Wembley is a tough place to go, um, and three defeats in a row now for City. Um, I just think you know their their confidence is dented a little bit. They'll eventually win the title, but I just don't think I, I don't know what I don't know what the scenario is. Do they need need to win it, or do they uh, can they get away with a point? I'm not sure. I think they can if if United don't win. Um, but I don't see them winning at Wembley. I'm can afraid. I ask you a question? How insane on a scale of one to ten is the decision to award that Stoke goal to Harry Kane just so he's got a chance of beating Mohamed Salah to the goal? Eleven. That is ridiculous. I, I've watched it in slow motion about fifty times, and it, the ball, the trajectory of the ball, it doesn't change. I don't know how. You know, you just robbed Ericsson of a few thousand pounds there as well. So, I think um, I, I think the FA board of awarding. Weird goals. I can't believe that must be the most awesome job in in all of football. Just Dubious deciding, goals. You know, dubious <laughs> goals. Just like, yeah, all right, that's a goal. How much do I get paid? Okay, cool. Did I sell my soul to the devil when I was twelve to get this job? Kind of thing, you know. Man, if if a role ever comes up, I'm I'm topping that list to apply for that job. <laughs> but you'd be fuming if you're Mo Salah and and he ends up losing out by a goal. Okay. He won't. No, um, but like uh, I, I, I presume that the, this uh, goals committee, they just gave it to Kane because they were fearful for the life of his uh, young daughter uh, after okay, him yes. swearing, <laughs> after him swearing on her life that he scored the goal. So maybe, he, maybe they didn't want some kind of weird rampage going on in uh, in uh, that part of North London. And uh, yeah, you, you know what I'm getting at. And it's uh, horrible thoughts that we need to change the subject on. Uh, Saturday, see some horse racing. Uh, the Grand National from Aintree. Martin, you've written about this, and it's been uh, quite the hit on our website. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a massive event, isn't it, really? I think uh, everyone, every man and their dog and woman and kid will have a few pennies uh, on Saturday on the Grand National. It's just one of those lotteries that, you know, you always just stick a quid on something you like the name of, and, that. and that's what it is. The Grand National, you know, 40 uh, talented horses and talented jockeys, but it's a complete lottery. 
Um, you know, there's been there's been like casualties over the years. We hope this year it doesn't happen. Um, but you know, you're looking at the betting. You've got uh, the likes of Annabelle Fly, Black Lion, Manila Rocco, uh, and potentially Total Recall um, heading the betting. Um, the the forty runner declaration. The, the the field was confirmed today. I think. Um, and I did tip up Bells Hill in the anti post, um, but he got taken out of the five day confirmation. Uh, so sadly, he's not going to be running. But uh, yeah, it's anyone's game. You know, I think I think ten to one is a favourite in a minute. So um, my advice is just enjoy it. Um, always look at the trends as well. There are in my article on on, on our website on Pro Tipster in the news section. Um, there's always trends to look out for, like the age of the horse. How many days since since the horse's last run? Um, if you go, if you look at the historical data over the years, um, it all seems to tally up, and then that leaves you with three or four horses to pick from. Um, so definitely well worth looking at it from that point of view. Um, just to will will the forty field down to about three or four, and you won't be far off. I'll tell you who my tip is. Go on. Number sixteen, uh, chase the spot. <laughs> I put, put money on him definitely <laughs> 50 to 1 yeah, 50 so to 1 if you don't know listeners Spud is my nickname it's what most of my mates call me so yeah definitely going for that <laughs> that's mad uh, Dan while you were away um, South Martin had a little bit of a conversation about value and you lads actually don't know this during the week I interviewed uh, a man called uh, Marcus Norheim and I have it recorded I'm going to edit it into the uh, podcast version of this that will be out later on. So we spoke about a uh, value betting because he is part of a company that looks a lot at uh, value betting. While a pro tipster, we mostly look at, uh, well, we do look at uh, tipsters and how good tipsters are and we give them rating. So it's a totally different area. Don't worry, it's not a competition thing if the boss is listening, <laughs> you know. But um, so I, I want to talk to you a little bit about value and I know I'm, I'm springing this on you I know you weren't prepared for this. So who wants to Bite the cherry first. What's your definition of value? I can I can do that. So value is where the probability of something happening is better than the odds being offered by the bookie. So if um, so, if for example, uh, the probability of Man City beating um, Tottenham is fifty percent, and the bookies are offering thirty three percent, that is value. Simple as that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and for me, when I I agree completely with that, and also look at look at recent form and stuff, and then for me, if I if I just see a price that sticks out like a sore thumb, where it should be, you know, it should be slightly odds on. I've got one right in front of me right now. I've got Peterborough to beat Rochdale this weekend. For me, it's value because Peterborough are eighth, pressing for promotion uh, in the playoffs. They're at two point four nine at home to Rochdale, who are in the relegation zone. Um, and and what, should they be, what should they be then, in your opinion? They should be probably evens, if not a little slightly odds on. I mean, um, Rochdale got smashed 4-1 by Wigan the other day. Um, they conceded three against Pompey the game before that. So they've conceded seven goals in two games. Peterborough score for fun. They've lost one in 10 at home and they're unbeaten in six at home. So I just don't understand that price. So for me, looking at the form and everything, that is value. Um, what? Well, my, actually, the listeners don't know this. It was on the, it was on the, our, our Slack channel. I was talking to Martin about this, about value. And that of late, I've kind of become a little bit suspicious of people speaking about value because the bookies, bookies are generally not wrong. Uh, mm. In football, in football, though, it is, the mo- it is the sport that they get wrong the most because there's the element of the draw. So that we, we take that. We know that. That's a, that's, that's a fact, okay? Football is where bookies do get it wrong the most, but they're still right most of the time. And, and I started to grow a little bit suspicious of, of this concept of value because I hear now on uh, a lot of podcasts that are sponsored by uh, bookies and on uh, radio shows where bookies come on and give odds for things happening on the weekend, bookies are mentioning something is great value. Now, I'm sorry, but if a bookie is saying that something they're offering is good value, I'm, I'm, I can't buy that. I'm too cynical and too suspicious. Uh, or am I wrong, lads? Depends, it depends how they trade. Because um, bookie, well, I'm, I'm going by the, the old historical way. Well, I'm, I'm, talking, I, I'm not going to name them, but I'm talking about the big usual suspects they still here. Tried. They still trade. 
if there's a lot of money gone on for a particular um, bet, um, they will lay off some of the risk. Okay, yeah, for sure. So it could, you know, I do, but I do agree with you. I'm cynical too because um, you got to look at some of the free bet promotions that some of the bookies put on, and they are ridiculous. Mm. And the, the the only, the only the only thing that I always look at when I see them is what what are the requirements to get the money out, and it's normally that onerous. You'll never see the cash ever. It's mm-hmm. just yeah, it's good um, to win. value is a really difficult thing to uh, calculate because you can't. I think it's almost impossible for someone like us to say this mm-hmm. team will have um, this has this percentage chance of winning. Um, so when you use things like the Kelly criterion, for instance, Kelly criterion is supposed to be about how much of your bankroll you stake, yeah. and it's based on this uh, concept of probability of, of of an outcome happening. It's really really difficult to do that. I mean, I, I, I when I write the when I write the previews to pro tips, I, I look at the odds and I look at I, tr- I, I try and work out what the bookies are trying to do. Like mm. for instance, the Man City, uh, the St- uh, Spurs Man City game, Spurs and Man City are almost level in odds. Because the bookies just can't call it, so I think uh, the last time I looked, Spurs were two point five three, Man City was two point six one, and the draw was three point something. Three, yeah, it's three point something. So basically, the, the, you know, it, it's, it's almost impossible to call that one. The bookies have said so that they put the, the price about even. Um, it's easier to find value bets with Asian handicap markets because it, you reduce the number of outcomes to two. Yeah. Either happens or it doesn't. Yeah, you somehow where you've got to push, but um, if you've got one where it's a plus half, for example, where where it can't be a push, you've only got two outcomes, and then it's a case of going with the market or going against the market. And um, I've been influenced by our friend Pro Tips Johnny, uh, wherever he is, in that um, <laughs> um, going against the market more often than not is the right thing to do. Joining us now, we have a, a guest. We have Marius Norheim here on. Marius, how's it going? It's going good. It's going good. Thanks a lot for uh, bringing me onto the show. Really looking forward to that. Not at all. Look, we, 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 we got in touch with each other a, a couple of weeks ago, and I've actually known uh, your software for a while. So can you please tell the listeners uh, a bit about it? Yeah. So basically, TradeMate is a value bet finder. And the core idea and principles behind what we do is to exploit inefficiencies because different bookmakers offer different odds on the same game. So, for instance, if one bookmaker is offering 220 in odds on uh, Liverpool beating Manchester City tonight and the rest of the market is offering 1.9, then that's a huge gap between the soft bookmaker, which is an outlier, and the rest of the market, which is much, much lower. So we look for those gaps, and when we find them, we signal it to our customers, who then head on to the bookie and place the bet, and then they have a, a value bet. Magic, because this is something that, that, that I, I wanted to, to bring up on the podcast for a while, because uh, usually we have a, a Martin and Dan and myself on, on the podcast, and, and value does come up a lot uh, when, 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 when we're talking about picks and that. And, you know, value for everyone is, is a little bit different, but I'd like to kind of get your own definition of it first, please. Yeah, so it, it touches upon what I just mentioned, that, uh, for us, the way we find value is to exploit price differences between bookmakers. Uh, but as a general, like, call it a benchmark, I think the best way to determine whether or not you have found value is to measure the odds you got at the bet you placed uh, versus, for instance, a sharp bookmaker like Pinnacle and see whether or not you are able to beat their closing line. That's the best benchmark that I would use. And it's a lot of different strategies and and ways that you can do to to make money from sports betting. What we do is one way, following good tipsters is another. But independent of like the strategy for making money, I would still measure my results against the closing line. And if I'm able to get better odds than what the closing line is at, then I would say that you have found value. Okay, that's interesting because... 
a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, I brought up something with, uh, I, th- I think Dan wasn't around then, Martin was with us. And I'd, I'd recently come across this uh, website called uh, uh, oddsmath.com. And it's pretty good because it shows rising and dropping odds. And I'm going to give an example that the listeners will know already. But a couple of weeks ago when Liverpool played uh, at Old Trafford, they were playing Man United at, at Old Trafford, and Liverpool's odds were crashing down, like really, really falling down very, very quickly. And Man United's was going up, and and this was all, it seemed to me, this was all based on Paul Pogba not playing. And I saw this as actually a good thing for Man United, because Fellaini was going to play, that meant they'd have an extra kind of defensive-minded player in. So actually, Man United, betting on Man United was a good thing, and like I actually bet against Liverpool who are my team and won money so I don't feel bad about it <laughs> but th- this is exactly the, the type of thing that we, that people should be looking for isn't it looking for uh, how odds move based on you know outside kind of influences yes I uh, I agree with that so like when especially with whether it's like injuries or unexpected changes to the lineups when stuff like that happens the market moves and like what I would ideally say is that if if you're serious about making money, it's good to have your money spread across a couple of different bookmakers so that you can then pick the best odds that you can possibly get. Uh, so, for instance, if the odds drops uh, on Manchester United, like you said, uh, but William Hill is still offering odds that is uh, that is way too high, while the rest of the market drop, then place the bet on William Hill, and and you just found yourself some value. Uh, you said there's something as well in, in, in the answer before about uh, the closing line. Um, yeah. So uh, okay, what I what in my example there, I had looked at the opening line and saw that it was going up, 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 and thought, okay, this is this is wrong. This is out of sync. Um. So uh, are are you someone who doesn't like to bet long before uh, an event? You, you prefer to wait until as close to kick off as possible. Yeah. Uh, we typically place bets closer to uh, to kick off. Yes. But part of that comes from sort of the way that that trade made works. Um, and if we find an edge of, let's say, 2% on, on Liverpool, and it's a couple of, uh, let's say it's 10 hours before the game starts, then a lot can happen during those 10 hours. News can get out about the injuries, about the lineups, and the odds change. Uh, so the probability of it Ending up as a, as a, of the odds moving either way to make it like a large value bet or not a value bet at all, like a, a minus EV bet is larger if you go earlier. Uh, but at the same time, the, the more money that is wagered on the game and the closer you get to kick off, the more information the bookmaker has about like how much, much money people are wagered on United to win and how much money they wagered on, on Liverpool to win. Uh, so, I would say that if you're not using like something like TradeMate, for instance, then it is better to go early uh, because then the market in general is less efficient. So if you have some sort of inside knowledge and let's say it's, it's probably tougher to beat uh, the Premier League where there are so many mm-hmm. experts and so many people who have a lot of knowledge, but you're specializing in some sort of niche league like the Norwegian second division or yeah. something like <laughs> that. And you know a lot about it, then then I would go early rather than late. So so probably so probably sports like basketball, ice hockey, baseball are probably better for this then because there's just so many more games. Well, more games is uh, is always a good thing, um, at least for us. Yeah. Football is the main thing, but uh, but there are like with especially with using trade mate. Uh, the key, since you can only expect like a small edge per game, like two to five percent, uh, the key is to get in as many bets as possible, and and you don't really care about which sports sport it is, uh, because what we do like apply across different sports. Different bookmakers still offer different odds uh, on a game, whether it's a basketball game or it's a football game. Yeah, oh, cool, it's great. But look, let's go back then, to, kind of to the start of of trade mate. Um, what was it that made you realize that there was something here in the markets that you could exploit and you wanted to make some software, uh, um, you know, uh, that, that, that could read it? And also, like, I presume this must have taken you a long time to come up with the algorithm and to get developers involved. And so, like, you know, how, how long has this been uh, a process for you? 
Yeah, sure. So uh, the company in itself has been around for like three, three and a half years. So it all started with a good friend of mine called Martin uh, and his childhood friend Jonas. Now, Jonas Yelstad, he dropped out of high school to become a professional poker player. So he moved to Thailand with a couple of other uh, very good Norwegian poker players, such as uh, Felix uh, Stephenson, who won the, no, he came second, sorry, in the VSOP one year. Uh, so they were down there in, in Thailand and doing their, uh, their poker playing and everything. And at some point, Jonas figured out that, hey, I can make some money from sports betting as well. Uh, and eventually he realized that he could make more money on the sports betting part than what he could doing playing poker. Um, and at this time, Martin was uh, studying at NTNU, which is the major technical university in Norway. Uh, so they talked to each other on a cabin trip, and Jonas told him about how he'd been able to, to exploit the bookmakers. And Martin, being a developer, said that there has to be like some sort of way to automate all of this. Yeah. Uh, so he sat down and built the first version of what is today known as TradeMate. Back then we were known as EdgeBet, and that's how it started really. And, and since then we have uh, yeah, brought on some new people to the team, and uh, here we are today. So it all started with a pro sports better and a talented developer, and then things have just uh, kept on rolling ever since. Magic, it's great, because I, 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 I watch your, your videos regularly that you put out on Twitter and all, and uh, yeah, I, I'd watch the ones with, 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 with uh, sorry, what's you say, the poker player? Jonas Jones. With Jonas, yeah. Gee, oh, wow, he's like, his videos are mad because he's he's won so much and then lost so much and then won it back again, and it's just, and he, he talks about discipline a lot, which is, I think it's probably after value betting is like the second most important thing because a lot of people they um you know they fall into the trap of trying to do Martin Gales and, and just trying to win back losses and stuff like that and it's just completely the wrong way of going. But you guys you guys do have an interesting staking plan as well. Can you uh, can you explain it? Well for stake sizing we use the Kelly criterion. Um so like to put it simply, there there are mainly like two main categories of stake sizing strategy. There's a flat stake sizing strategy, which is pretty simple. You determine a, a stake that you're happy to put on each bet, for instance, uh, 10 pounds or 100 pounds. And the alternative is to use some sort of proportional stake sizing strategy relative to your overall bankroll. Um, so this is what the Kelly criterion does. It is a proportional staking strategy. And it will take into account the odds you get on the bet, the edge that you say you have, uh, and your overall bankroll. And then it determines like how, how much of a percentage of your bankroll should you bet. Uh-huh. And on the size of your bankroll, um, you know how much exactly you should stake. Ah, uh, great. Okay. So that, that works really well with your software then because you, 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 you tell your users what the edge is and then they can calculate how much they should be staking. Exactly. Oh, that's exactly. genius, man. Well done. That's very good. I like that. Um, yes. So, um, tell us a bit then about how you know how, how how the company has expanded, and you said it's only about, about three years old and all that. But like, how how have you found? Well, okay, a couple of questions. How have you found it's been for you to expand in this world of? Because there's so many charlatans out there uh, selling yeah. quicksand, selling what's the word? Not quicksand. So anyway, you know, the snake oil and all that, <laughs> and as well. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. Have you made any enemies with the bookies or anything like that? <laughs> well, the bookies don't like us very much. <laughs> I mean, basically anyone who does very well on a bookmaker over time will face limits at, at some sort of, uh, at some point in time. So for us and for our users, it's a matter of like maximizing the value you're able to extract from an individual bookie before that happens. And then you just move on to the next bookie. Mm. But luckily, there are a lot of bookmakers in the world. And <laughs> uh, now, in terms of like uh, all the the snake oil salesmen and everything, uh, like honestly, it, it is tricky. There is mm. a, it's a space where there's a lot of competition for attention, and it is difficult if you're just getting started to figure out like 
what's worth listening to and what is just complete bullshit. Yeah. And I always try to, to use, uh, first I ask myself, like, does this make logically sense? Um, and then I want to, like, dig into the, the data and the stats and, and see, like, does the maths add up as yeah. well? Um, is, is this is this a little bit Marius why why you've gotten into making more and more videos and and and, and publishing articles and all that? Is that a conscious effort to say right? We're go- this is how we want to get out. Yeah, so we do our best to to really educate people on sports betting in general and also like specifically on how to use TradeMate and why it works. And like, there's so many commercials on. Uh, if you sit down and watch a football game in, in England specifically, <laughs> in, in the UK, uh, there's so many betting commercials, and all of them are telling you that hey, you should put um, ten pounds on this amazing accumulator that we have made, uh, and then you will win a million pounds. <laughs> uh, it's life. Yeah. And and the, the problem, for instance, with accumulators is that. Uh, the odds that you are getting, yeah, it's high if you combine 10 games, but it's still like so much worse than what it really should be mm. uh, because they apply like a margin on every single one of those bets. And when you multiply those together, their margin in the end gets super large. Uh, so where one thing that, that I would tell people is, for instance, don't bet on accumulators. That's all the marketing stuff from the bookies. Uh, to give the house a larger edge, mm. so two single bets. That's uh, that's my tip there. So then, okay. So then, uh, that has to lead me on into the next question of who who are your favorite bookies to go with? Are you someone who uh, sticks to Pinnacle or uh, Betfair? These ones, or, or do you look to, to to the Asians? Uh, well, in general, we quite like the European bookies because they are softer to beat than the, the sharper bookies. So it's kind of like if you can have money in one bank and get. 2.5% interest on your money and you can have them in a second bank and get 0.5% interest on your money, then of course you're going to put as much money as possible with, uh, with where you can get the highest return on investment. Uh, so we prefer the European bookies for sure. And when it comes to them internally, uh, I want bookies that have a lot of edges and uh, that enables me to, to place many bets and that also, some of the nice to haves is that they are easy to navigate and mm. you can like search for games. And I'm I'm quite sure that some of the bookies try to make it a bit difficult for you <laughs> purpose that they can buy themselves a bit more time to yeah. slash the rods uh, before you get to it. Uh, definitely, definitely, there's a lot of that going on. I'd say, um, right, Marius, I, I don't think I really have anything else for you more. Just uh, give us another plug then, please, uh, for your software and tell us uh, where people can can go to your website because I know you have a very good uh, trial at the moment yeah. on your site. Yeah, sure. So if you want to try TradeMate Sports, head over to TradeMateSports.com. Everyone who wants to try it gets seven days for free, and then there's no strings attached, no commitment. If you want to quit after seven days, you can do so. If you want to keep going, you can purchase a subscription. And we have, like, one cheap package, but that only supports, like, the national bookies in Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. And after that, you'll have to start on like the core package, which is priced at 120 euros per month. And we also have like a pro package for professional sports bettors that targets the Asian bookies, uh, plus the betting exchanges like Matchbook, Betfair, Betdac. Um, so it's a bit for both the beginners and for the more professional bettors. One doesn't really need to know that much about sports. In general, to use it, like really, we show you where the, which game uh, there is an edge on. You go to the bookie, you place it, you register with us, and we keep track of your stats. So it's, it's quite simple to use if you just take time to watch a tutorial or two. Nice. So, uh, um, yeah. One more, one more. Um, so what? You know, it's a horrible question to ask. I hate it. It's that typical one in interviews. And uh, wh- where do you see yourselves going and 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 expanding in the future? What do you want to really achieve in a couple of years' time? Like, well, we want to, yeah, we want to grow trade mid as as much as we possibly can, and. Like ideally, potentially, we want to make it possible for people to um, place bets directly through TradeMate online. That would be a very nice addition, or at least like directly uh, to the 
Asian bookies as mm-hmm. part of the pro software. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we still have a lot on like our development list before that happens. Um, but that's at least like that will be the next big step for us. And besides that, you know, bookies kick us out. If we can help more players to, uh, to beat them, then that's a, that's a great, uh, great way to, to give some payback to this. Yes. Because I, I, I presume as well, it's kind of like, um, when people find your software and find, you know, how good it is and it works, I presume it's kind of, a lot of people don't really want to share it because it's like, no, it's my secret. I'm making money here and I don't want to tell anyone about it. So it's, it's a very hard industry to do very well in because when people do find an edge, they don't want to give away the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, that, that is a, a challenge that we will face at some point. Um, but we support a lot of different bookies. We, People use the software at many different times, so it's not necessarily like an overlap uh, between all of that. And if you use multiple bookies, one might place the bet on Whale Hill, another places it on, on Unibet. So at some point, yeah, it, uh, it can get tricky. Uh, but uh, for now, it's uh, it's fine. And Magic, That's it. good. Well, look, Marius Norheim, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And, uh, yeah, look, best of luck with TradeMate. Uh, everyone, listeners, go and check it out. It's a great piece of software. And, uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me, Paddy. And best of luck to you guys as well. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to protipster.com for more details. So, lads, let's go to uh, uh, Sunday. Oh, no, was there was something from Saturday, actually, I wanted to talk about. There was only, um, I'm a bit behind on my articles that I've written this week for uh, silly reasons, but there's there's a, a promotion battle in Serie B. I'm a big fan of Serie B. Parma are taking on Citadella. And if I could just find the article, I could give you a nice stat but it seems to have let me down. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll, while you're looking, I, I can give you a nice bit of value that I found today. Okay, give us that then. <clears throat> so, um, as as everyone knows, I'm a hipster when it comes to football. So I've been writing the um, East, uh, East Asia football articles today, Korea, Japan, China. Big fan of the Chinese <laughs> Super League. On Saturday, Shandong Luneng play Dalian Yufang. And Dalian Yufang have had one of those seasons where they've just been pants. Lost their first game 8-0. Um, mm. They brought in Yannick Carrasco and Nicholas Gaetan from Atletico, and they've been poor. However, about three weeks ago, they switched their manager and brought in Bern Schuster. And things have changed. Yes, they've only drawn the last two games. And the last one, they dropped a 2-0 lead to draw 2 all. They've still got defensive problems, but they're getting better. And they're playing a Shandong side who just don't score goals. Don't concede many, but they don't score goals. Dalian Yifang are a massive, massive price to win on Saturday. Now, I don't think they will, but this is one of those where I think it's a good idea to go against the market. You can get, I think, nearly two um, for Dalian Yifang plus one. So that's Dalian Yifang not to lose by two, and um, you get your money back if they lose only by one. The last time these two played, Dalian won. That's, that's my value bet for this weekend. Dali Ang do fang dilly dilly. Lovely. Dali Ang do fang. Dilly dilly. I love that ad. Drive <laughs> boys mad. I love it. Um, Dan probably doesn't know what wrong with it because the Budweiser ad, Dan. Anyway, Budweiser, if you want to send us some uh, free beer, uh, your beer is muck, but we'll still drink it. Uh, <laughs> Parma, yeah, so uh, Syria B, I found the stats. So uh, something is uh, uh, going to crack on, on, on Saturday. Parma and Citadella, they are in a, a relegation, or sorry, they're in a promotion dogfight because Serie B is incredibly tight uh, after first place. So between second and eighth place, there's very, very little between them. Uh, Parma are unbeaten in 12 Serie B home matches and uh, Citadella have scored in nine or 10 previous matches. So I, I think Parma are going to get the best of this, but it's a very, very close match. And uh, yeah, if you like... Um, uh, it, it, it's just really, really close. So if if you're near a telly or, or not telly, um, usually people like Bet365 and Unibet are streaming the Serie B matches. So there's a lot of interest in matches going to be coming up in Serie B between now and the end of the season. So if you're into um, yeah, kind of dogfight football, you know, championship type of stuff where there's not a lot of goals, but there's a lot of 
horrible tackles. Then uh, make sure and shake us. So you'd be uh, Bundesliga two is very similar as well. You were writing about that, weren't you, Martin? Yeah, it was, it was like, yeah, it's crazy. I think uh, between fourth and fifteenth, there's four points. Four points between Jan Jan Ragenstag and and Kaiser Slouten at the bottom, isn't it? It's, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's. Just I, I can't believe how tight it is. I mean, St. Pauli are, are just above the uh, relegation playoff, and I think it, it's not going to happen. But if they won their remaining games, they yeah. could potentially scrape a, a playoff place. Oh, St. Paul <laughs> for promotion. Bundesliga, that'd be brilliant. Uh, it's going to be St. Pauli Hamburg next season, so that'd be interesting. Ooh, nice. Because they're going down Hamburg. Um, what else do we want to talk about, lads? Uh, Spurs City, we did. Uh, yeah, uh, there'll be a newsletter going out tomorrow with uh, different sports. So we'll have the entry bet in it. Uh, there's a couple of football. There's a, a little thing about the Chinese uh, Grand Prix that's going on as well. We picked a good one uh, for uh, Hamilton, uh, not just to win, but uh, you're going to have to read the newsletter to find out what it is. Um, uh, Sunday then, lads, there's a couple of big matches. Let's show Roma, that's going to be a good one, especially with uh, Roma now just going to be on a high after that match. And Let's show just going to be like, nah, this is our home game. <laughs> we, have, we have a stadium for today, so we're going to kick your asses, probably. Uh, was there anything, anything that tickled your fancy from Sunday? I know we don't have any Sunday articles up yet. They'll all go up tomorrow. Was there any matches uh, that you're looking for? I, I mean, not bet, for me, not betting-wise, um, but... Interesting intrigue is Schalke Dortmund. That's a great, massive derby. That'll be interesting. But also ben, Benfica versus Porto on Sunday. Oh, of course, uh, yeah. That's pretty much going to be a title decider, in my opinion. Um, I, I personally think Benfica need to win. They're a point ahead of Porto at the moment. However, if they draw this, I've just looked at Porto's running. They've got, got a really easy running. They should win all their games. Um, but Benfica have still got to go away uh, to sport in Lisbon in the Lisbon derby. So... Mm. I personally think Benfica needs to win this, otherwise Porto will end up winning the league. Um, so that's going to be a great game. And so well, will Sporting Shelton. have all their players for that um, for that Lisbon derby. Yeah, it's, they're it's, they're well, in complete disarray at the moment. Well, that they are. It's been sorted out, except for uh, tonight. Uh, Bas Dost is suspended, and um, oh god, what's his name? The the chap on loan from um, uh, from Real Madrid, the blondie guy. Oh uh, god. Portuguese international. Ah, I can't think of his name. Anyway, they're both still suspended, uh, but everyone else is back because, um, yeah, they've really turned on the chairman, Bruno. What's his name? Uh, he's, he's basically, he's like the Donald Trump of football, basically. That's what I've seen him uh, being called. And they're all against him. All the shareholders want him out. Uh, he probably won't be there next season. And the manager, Jorge, Jorge, Jorge Jesus, he's allowed to pick whoever he wants now again. And they won the other night. They were, they, everyone was saying that, that because of this thing that they wouldn't but he called back mm-hmm. he, he was a left pick uh, all of his players and uh, yeah they won so everything in Sporting looks like it's going to be okay again and they're playing tonight as well they're playing Letico Madrid and um, yeah they're 2-0 down from the first leg which that, that'll be over by the time or be half yeah it'll be on when, when, when this comes out proper anyway so uh, lads I don't know if unless there's anything else from uh, Sunday I think we can wrap up uh, pay, I think for me that it. All right then. So uh, Dan, where are you on the internet? Um, you can find me Pro Tips to Dan on Twitter. Uh, Pro Tips to Dan, all one word, on Facebook. Um, I'm generally more these days on the Pro Tips to the website. Um, read my articles. I spend lots of time on them. Yeah. And I'm yeah, I, I know I'm a football hipster, but there is value out. I, I, I'm using that word, but there is value out there. <laughs> and there are some cracking matches, South America. Um, East Asia, especially with the European leagues ending. So give us a read. Give us a follow. <clears throat> Good stuff, Martin. Yourself? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at ProTips to ENG or on Facebook at ProTips to Martin. Uh, again, yeah, come and read my articles. If, even if you don't know anything about the matches, just follow what we're picking and, and, and you won't go far wrong. Um, Grand National wise, obviously, we mentioned it earlier. Just want to say my tip um, is Black Lion. So. If you want a few pennies, stick it on Black Lion. He was fourth last year, and he's nine years old, which is a great age uh, for this race. So there's my tip. Magic, good stuff. And uh, I'm going to chase the sport. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and you can get me on Twitter, uh, Spudcast on Twitter, or uh, Pro Tips the Football Show, Pro Tips the Sports Betting Podcast as well on Twitter. And uh, yeah, like the lads. I'm usually hanging around on the, the Pro Tips the UK Facebook page as well. Yeah, so look, uh, we're glad to be back. Uh, delighted to be back. Sorry that we had to take a break there for a while. 
But uh, yeah, the Dream Team are back and we'll be back again on probably Monday with a look back at the weekend and towards the week's fixtures as well. So we're on iTunes, YouTube, uh, Facebook. Uh, we're everywhere. We're all over the place. Just have a search for, for Sports Betting Podcast, uh, Pro Tips for Sports Betting Podcast if you want. And uh, yeah, you'll find us easy. And just uh, tell all your mates about us because, uh, you know, we just want to be loved really at the end of the day. <laughs> Look, we're also speak- for free beer sponsorships. Free beer sponsorship. Yeah, we want that too. And check out our articles, protipster.com forward slash betting news. We put up loads of stuff there. And uh, yeah, if you if you were following our tips, you'd, uh, you'd be doing quite well for yourself, if we do say so ourselves. All right, lads. Take it easy then. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out protipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are protipsterglobal. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN or ProTipsterIRL. Bye.